So another question I received is about the nature of, uh, of alien intelligence or alien life. Uh, so one of the aspects which I've been asked to respond to is, um, is there life on, uh, on other planets of our solar system? Well, um, that depends very much on the definition of life. Um, because in a way any replicating or self-replicating system is, you could say, life. So uh, a chemical catalyst which produces more of the same, a crystal which is growing, is life. And in that sense, yes, there is life on other planets in our solar system. If you're talking about biological life, similar to life on Earth, no, there is no biological life. Uh, or life of uh, such complexity as we have here. Um, as far as I know, on other planets in our solar system. There is no similar uh, consciousness. And to understand a little bit of more about this, we have to talk about the path of uh, spiritual uh, evolution. Because roughly there is two different evolutionary paths which are in a way crossing here. Um, so on the one hand, there is the path towards, you could say, simplicity, purity, uh, detachment. And this is a path of, uh, of development which is followed by many um, spirits who exist in mineral form. And also often um, um, even greater mineral forms such as planetary bodies or solar bodies. They are in a way um, moving in a way from a very chaotic state into a very ordered state where they become more pure, more organized, uh, less disturbed, more crystallized. Um, and then you have of course the life which goes in a very opposite direction. If you look at human development we've been getting steadily more complex and also almost all biological life if you look at plants from they started as very simple mosses and now you have very complex plants like trees. So this is a completely different path of development and also very different spirits follow very different paths of development. So you could say there's really two categories of, of spirits. There's spirits which evolve towards uh, complexity and there's spirits who vo evolve towards purity. Ultimately, these two things are not exclusive, but they tend to work together only with the greatest difficulty. Usually by decreasing uh, complexity, it is much more easy to gain purity, to gain balance, to gain harmony. And by increasing complexity, we tend to increase the amount of disharmony, the amount of chaos uh, which is existing. Um, if we're talking about alien life, we find that we are relatively chaotic and disorganized. Most other societies, they work together a lot more with also the, uh, the, the planetary spirits and the planetary bodies. And they learn from them the art of stability, the art of balance, the art of harmony. And um, somehow humans um, have made several attempts at this, at feeling and understanding the other different uh, planets like our Earth but also the other planetary bodies and learning from them and forming structure. Um, this is ultimately how also astrology can guide us and is very much a, a roadmap for our spiritual development, our spiritual life. But somehow we humans are not very good at organizing our, uh, our, ourselves and our society along those principles. So our society is one of the most chaotic and tumultuous um, of our uh, local star group. So if we're talking about the, uh, the purpose of life, um, that's very twofold. So you have your individual purpose as a soul which is striving towards understanding. Ultimately every spirit is striving towards 
greater understanding and ultimately towards a unification uh, with the Creator. So both the planetary spirits which are going towards simplicity, purity, harmony, stability and the complexity spirits. They're just different roads but they all end up at the Creator. We're just going about it in, in very different fashions. So there there is no, uh, no difference except for progress. And it's important to note that um, there is a slight difference between change and progress. Because not all change is for the better. Um, change does give experience, which can ultimately lead to, to knowledge, to insight and uh, more stability, better coping abilities. Uh, but sometimes we can overdo it. And rather than, um, than learning from the change, we can actually um, divert ourselves. And not that it really matters, but we lose time by, in a way, destroying what we have built up or um, going around in little circles or uh, veering away from our path and like yeah we should be going straight up and we're going up and up see we're still going up and yes I'm still going up and up and up but it's asymptotically yeah leveling out or we get stuck on a local maximum so like oh, any progress makes things worse but sometimes you make things a little bit worse to reach new heights. So it's very difficult for us to really find the best way or the fastest way to progress as spirit. And this is a problem which exists in many solar systems. Uh, but we are having an extraordinary amount of difficulty with, uh, with this. And this is one of the uh, very beneficial influences we are actually receiving from these other solar systems. So we're actually um, receiving bands of, uh, of yeah, spirits which have yeah, created a, a way of structuring life, of uh, structuring experiences, uh, so that we can develop from that, if, that we can life after life by sticking with the system we can build on our previous lives. And these uh, groups, these bands, are called egregores. Egregore is the Greek word for choir. So in a choir you have different tones, different voices. You have the, the bass and the baritone and you have the sopranos. And in the same way, within such an egregore you have on the upper levels you have angels and enlightened beings, spiritual masters. And on the lower levels you have very primitive spirits, elemental spirits, sometimes nature spirits. And yeah, usually more or less in the middle uh, you have humans. And slightly above or at similar levels you have humans who don't have bodies anymore for guide spirits. So just like a choir. They work on many levels and this is also the power of an egregore, the power of such a choir that every layer is in a way connected, working together, working in unison with higher levels. So the highest impulses are being translated down to the lowest level. And this allows for a very high impulse to be accessible depending on what level the individual is at. So it has its, in a way, its um, a symmetry. If you look at how uh, the Mahayana Buddhists teach their holy writings, they are in a way reinventing them, rewriting them every day, so that people on different levels of understanding, in different times, in different cultures, in different societies, will have access to that highest impulse in a way which is applicable to them. So you could say very much that the Sangha is an egregore. It's a perfect example of an egregore. But most of these egregores are actually not created on our planet, but they are more, in a way, um, descending or manifesting on our planet while having their source on another planet. And often uh, lots of revolutions in our uh, society for instance, uh, the Age of Empires, where um, first Spain and then later Britain 
um, you know, tried to unify the whole world. Um, this is an impulse which is has originated from another solar system. If you look at, for instance, also the, the Renaissance movement of the rebirth of work, the working together of knowledge, of art, of beauty, of spirituality and science, all of them blending together. This is also an egregorial impulse, which is not native to our planet actually. If you look at shamanism, our ability to learn from and to relate with forms which are very different from our own, to see all animals, all stones, all plants, all spirit as our brothers and sisters and to overcome our differences and find ways to work together. This is also an impulse which is not originated from the earth. So we have received many, many blessings from these different aliens, from these different solar systems through the forms of these uh, egregores. So it is important not to fear aliens and also to, uh, when we're working with them, try first to relate to the sun and under the guidance of the sun and under the guidance of whatever personal guides might be helping you or even collective guides which are taking care of your country, of your culture, um, to find which egregores, which choirs might be uh, carrying impulses which are beneficial for you, paths which your own per personal spirit can follow. And this is one of the great advantages of living on our planet because most planets have a relatively small number of egregores, a very small number of spiritual development paths which are available, which are in tune with their society. But here we have literally hundreds of egregores. So we have hundreds of different ways in which we can evolve our spirits, in which we can advance ourselves, available to us. The big problem is not the availability of an appropriate path. The problem is actually finding it and accessing it and also the conflict between all these different groups because you gain an ally but that ally might have enemies and often yeah it is about choosing sides so joining an egregore has immense benefits because incarnation after incarnation you can be guided and you can start building upon the basis you lay in every incarnation so it will really solidify all your previous life experiences. Uh, but it also has challenges, it has a price which you have to pay and it requires a certain amount of strength, of power, of devotion um, to become part of something larger than yourself. Um, you can of course also grow as an individual just flitting about and learning and seeing different sites and visiting different egregores without ever joining one. But um, it is easier to join an egregore than to uh, have to do it all by yourself. But if you are strong enough, if you are powerful enough, then you can do it in an individual fashion without having to sacrifice or to pay the price for um, yeah, being part of an egregore but also the higher knowledge, the higher levels of knowledge of the egregores, they're not accessible by mere wanderers, they're only accessible by the yeah, members of the inner circle. Um, so it's a choice, like do you want to in a way specialize, go very deep into one spiritual path and reach the highest levels within it, or are you more of a generalist? who wants to know a little bit of everything and maintain their independence. So I hope that um, this will help you in, uh, in your working together with um, uh, these aliens. And I would advise alien egregores to work with rather than individual aliens because most of the individual aliens which are here, which are not part of an egregore, uh, they tend to have smuggled themselves in rather than having gone through the solar channel. And that also means that you're not being monitored by your planetary spirit or your solar spirit and they can 
do things which are actually against or not in concert with the local spiritual laws. So there's a lot less safety in dealing with rogue aliens than with the approved aliens, but it's also a lot more adventurous and you can learn things from them which are not accessible by working within the approved channels because certain knowledge and certain powers are uh, in a way judged to be too advanced for yeah, our current modern day society but they are accessible by working together with these rogue aliens. So plenty of opportunities to be had for those who are courageous enough and strong enough to handle them. Good luck out there.